I'm James Hansen. I'm an adjunct professor at Columbia University and director of the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies. But I'm speaking here in my private capacity. I have been a researcher in planetary atmospheres and climate. I've published well over 100 papers on climate science. I'm a member of the National Academy of Sciences in the United States, and I've received um, many prestigious awards, including the top award of the American Meteorological Society. Uh, so I think I'm well qualified to speak about uh, climate science and the impacts that climate change will have um, on our planet and on, um, on people. This uh, evidence is being recorded today on the 17th of uh, May in 2011 in uh, Wellington. I'm in um, New Zealand on a speaking tour and, uh, and recording it at this time. I've read the code of conduct for expert witnesses and I understand that and um, I'm uh, testifying under those conditions. I have been briefed on the proposal for a coal mine at Deniston and I'm aware of the basic uh, characteristics and uh, as they relate to my areas of expertise. I've been asked to comment on this as an expert on climate and I'm not an advocate for any particular group. I hope that I will be able to assist the council in understanding the implications of this project for young people and future generations. What my research in climate has shown, along with that of my colleagues and many other people around the world, is that the climate is now, the planet uh, is now out of energy balance. We have these measurements from uh, several thousand floats distributed around the world ocean. They allow us to measure the amount of energy that's being gained or lost by the ocean. And what we find is that uh, the ocean and the planet are gaining energy at a rate of something more than half a watt per meter squared or and less than three quarters of a watt. And that tells us that if we want to stay, it, the reason that this is occurring is, is clear. It's the expected effect of the increasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere which traps infrared energy. The implication is that there's climate change in the pipeline. In addition to the warming that has already occurred, there's, a, there's further warming in the pipeline because of this planetary energy imbalance. What it means is that if we want to stabilize the climate and avoid the consequences, the melting of uh, the ice sheets on Greenland and Antarctica, the, uh, the many other effects that are observed in changing climate, then we will need to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere by at least, if the imbalance is half a watt, it means that we would have to go back to 360 parts per million. If it's three quarters of a watt, it's 345. But in any case, what it means is we have to go to a level of atmospheric carbon dioxide that's less than the current amount if we want to restore the planet's energy balance and stabilize climate. Otherwise, what we will be doing is leaving for future generations a certainty of additional climate changes which will have uh, substantial consequences. We know from the Earth's history that if the planet uh, continues to warm up, there will be major consequences on uh, sea level, for example. Greenland is now losing mass at a rate of more than 200 cubic kilometers per year. Antarctica is losing mass at a rate of more than 100 cubic kilometers per year. And the equilibrium, the eventual response, if we stay on business as usual for even a, a few more decades is going to be, uh, uh, in the case of sea level, a, a large change of measured in meters. Also, we know that we're putting pressure on different species on the planet and 
will be driving a significant fraction of them to uh, extinction if we stay on a business as usual path. So the bottom line is that we realize that the amount of uh, carbon dioxide that we will get from the easily available oil and gas is enough to push the system up to a dangerous level. It will be possible to restore the planet's energy balance with concerted efforts to improve um, agricultural practices and reforestation, forestry practices, provided that we don't exploit the dirtiest fuels on the planet. The bottom line is that we realize we cannot burn all of the fossil fuels on the planet without producing uh, basically a different planet with different shorelines, with climate zones shifting to a degree that drives a significant fraction of the species on the planet to extinction. But bec the easily available oil and gas is limited in amount. We're already probably at approximately peak oil. But the real issue is the coal. There's so much carbon in the coal, the only way that we can avoid really uh, disastrous consequences for future generations is if we leave most of the coal in the ground. We're going to have to phase out coal use over the next um, few decades. And that means it doesn't make sense to begin new operations or to open new coal mines. We've got to phase that out if we want to uh, stabilize climate. So this mine uh, will supposedly produce six, approximately six megatons of uh, bituminous coal, which would translate into 15 to 20 megatons of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That is a, f a small fraction of the total coal being burned in the world, but the fact is we're going to have to phase out coal emissions altogether if we're going to leave our children and future generations with a climate that avoids passing beyond tipping points that have uh, highly undesirable consequences. So we're, we're going to have to phase that out, and this is uh, a non-negligible uh, contribution to the climate change problem. And it, it doesn't matter where the coal is burned, the effect will be the same on the global climate. And of course, this would apply to any large-scale coal extraction. But the basic point is that we're going to have to phase out these large-scale coal extractions if our um, children and grandchildren are going to um, have the opportunity to have the same a sort of planet and environment and climate that we have enjoyed. Uh, thanks very much for considering my uh, comments on this subject.